South African Airways says there are no disruptions to flights in and out of Zimbabwe. Other business stakeholders are also reporting that the country's political turmoil is not affecting trade. Money Lines' Devin Morrigan finds a filed this report. SAA flies daily into Zimbabwe with a total of 28 flights per week between the two countries. The Johannesburg Harare route boasts three flights per day. The airline says it's keeping a close eye on developments, but its operations are unaffected by the latest political turmoil. From a point of view of uh, our own commercial interests, at this point, we have not received any information that uh, indicates otherwise from a point of view of uh, destabilizing our operations. And from that point, we can confirm that uh, our Operations are as per normal and our flights are operating as per schedule. Should the situation uh, change in any way, we should be able to issue a customer and a public notification that advises our customers and stakeholders as to what alternative measures we will employ. Zimbabwe is South Africa's fifth largest trading partner, with exports to our northern neighbor hitting nearly 30 billion rand last year. There are 120 South African companies doing business in Harare. On land, Limpopo's Bait Bridge border posts connects the two countries. It's the busiest in Africa and sees cargo worth millions pass daily. A business forum for Zimbabweans living in South Africa says political turmoil in Harare has not affected them. You speak to the people in general, we've got people in the mining sector who are transporting things like chrome and uh, all those particular commodities uh, and uh, fuel as well. And also, as you mentioned earlier, does it affect uh, the transportation of goods to the retail sector? Uh, currently, there is not much impact in that particular space. Yes, there is obviously jitter here and there. Some might would have withheld the transportation of goods and stuff like that to see what transpires today. But as I sit here now, uh, after having a few conversations before I came for this interview, it seems as if everything is, is business as usual. Ndlovu says business is hoping for a more enabling environment to materialize soon. Reports indicate that while customer traffic is lower than usual in retailers and banks, it appears to be business as usual in Harare. But that business picture could change if the stalemate is protracted. Devon Murrigan, Johannesburg. Well, joining us for more on that story is Avia Rangomanda, who's regional analyst at Political Economy Southern Africa and managing director at J.M. Busher. That's Joseph Busher. Thank you so much to both of you for your time uh, today. It's been a tumultuous um, couple of days, particularly overnight and throughout uh, this day. And it seems that the, the army, uh, Joseph, has tried to really keep things calm, telling people to go to work. But I wonder how much economic activity actually takes place in a situation. Like no, certainly. I, I think obviously one of the key issues they had to do was to try to calm everybody, to say, well, your life is as normal, uh, go to work, go about with your business. But it's very impossible given the fact that, you know, there's no police, so the police um, has been taken out of the streets. And certainly, you know, people who have heightened anxiety to see, you know, what's going to happen uh, next, uh, ne 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 the next day. So I don't think it's as simple as that. It does appear like that on the surface, but I'm not quite sure what's happening in people's minds. Certainly, Vela, we know um, as South Africans the impact that political uncertainty has um, on, the, on the economy and on perceptions about the direction of the economy. Definitely, and I think with what's happening now in Zimbabwe, there's a lot of uncertainty around the impact that it's going to have on trade relations between South Africa and Zimbabwe. It's still a bit too soon. To, to sort of tell what the economic impact might be, but definitely in the, the political, the realm of the political economy, we, we can expect uh, some, some repercussions there. What sort of repercussions? So, for instance, with South Africa's research, South Africa is now the, the chair of uh, the SADC, yeah. and there's, there will be a lot of pressure on South Africa to act not only as Zimbabwe's neighbour, but also in its capacity as chair of, of SADC. So it needs to take a more decisive stance, especially now that the developments in Zimbabwe have been defined as a coup. As you know, the AU as well as SADC, they have a very strict, uh, they have strict 
rules and guidelines on what, what happens next with the member state once a, a coup has been declared, talking issues of sanctions yeah. and along those lines. Certainly, yeah. and trade is a big issue, um, Joseph, yes. um, particularly at this point. We know um, uh, about our trade relations with Zimbabwe from a formal perspective, but also from an informal mm -hmm. perspective, exactly. right? That's absolutely correct, Siki. If you look at it, basically, Zimbabwe consumes about 70% of their products from South Africa. So Zimbabwe is the biggest trading partner for, for South Africa in the region, within the Sajak region. Uh, the clip showed that basically what about 28 flies. Uh, that flies from Jobek to Harare every single week. So South Africa is, is, is basically the lifeboat yeah. uh, for Zimbabwe since uh, 2000 uh, and the crisis during President Beck's days when it was called quite diplomacy. So again, obviously, it is revisiting President Zuma, and certainly it's important to be able to see what happens. When they introduced the um, uh, ban for some of the products, you yeah. saw Messina was affected hugely because, you know, Messina is like a shopping center for Zimbabwe. Absolutely. And the, the, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry had to issue a statement yes, um, about yeah, that yeah, as well, yeah. certainly. Let's, let's talk about some of these economic indicators, and I'll start with you, just starting with the market. Um, Joseph, ahead of this, already there were concerns about a bubble uh, situation. We've seen um, the Zimbabwean stock exchange uh, climbing, you know, multiple hundreds of percents yeah. over the past few months. What's been underlying that particular? Bubble? So the driver for that really was the uh, cash crisis in Zimbabwe liquidity. So when the U.S. dollar was kind of being phased out and you could only get it sometimes in the black market, people thought of the hyperinflation days again. So people were piling money into the stock market instead of basically keeping in a bank because you could not use it in a bank. If you go to a bank, you're going to get $20 if you're lucky, but after staying in the queue for four hours. So people thought the best way uh, to hide our money or to store a little bit of value in our money, let's go to the stock market. So that rush caused the stock market to rally significantly. And again, this is not driven by any fundamentals, yeah. but purely by fear. The fact that you can't take your money out Neither, if you have got a Zimbabwean card, credit card, you can't use it outside Zimbabwe. And in fact, we saw the Bitcoin um, also climbing quite significantly. Understanding Zimbabwe, the Bitcoin has basically taken a hit and yeah. uh, done far much better than elsewhere. <laughs> uh, so again, you know, you're not quite sure whether basically it's also not speculation. And secondly, mm -hmm. people not being taken for a ride by that uh, trade as well. This economy has been described as one that has collapsed, and it's, it's easy for us to make that statement sitting um, uh, from a distance, but, and a lot of South Africans don't know what a collapsing economy looks like. What has been going on with the Zimbabwean economy? Well, there's been a shift in the Zimbabwean economy from the formal economy into the informal economy. And what we're seeing, especially when you look at cross-border trade between South Africa and Zimbabwe, is that a lot of that trade is happening in the informal economy. And that's why with the whole restriction of, of uh, trade goods across the border that was imposed last year, mm. you know, they, there was a lot of upheaval amongst informal traders, especially because now there was concern about how are they going to make their basic living. You know, so the, we tend to underestimate the role of the informal con economy within Zimbabwe and how it's, it's the bread and butter for many Zimbabweans yeah. because of the collapse of the formal economy. And when people are hiding their dollars under their mattresses and are going to the black market to exchange them rather than going to the formal commercial banks, mm. um, what's, what's been the relationship between those, those two, the formal and the informal economy? Because so it speaks to, it just shows, goes to show the, the extent to which the, the Zimbabwean economy is, is in trouble. You know, and with the, the military moving in, it's them saying, one of the reasons really is them saying, listen, we've had enough, we want to restore confidence in our economy. I mean, you can only, that economy can only survive for so long, you know, before it, it crumbles. Some would say it might have crumbled a long time ago. Yeah. But now we're seeing that people are saying, especially from the military side, is that enough is enough now. We cannot continue to, to survive like this just based on the, the informal economy. Okay. What's the best case scenario going forward? 
Well, the best case scenario for me is that they need to be quite clear in terms of what's going to happen so that the hardships do not go back to Zimbabwe again. Mm -hmm. Because if people cannot come and purchase and do their daily duties, as you know, some people actually, it was almost a daily issue yeah. or a, a weekly issue, then you're going to see things on the shelf again disappearing quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so the bond notes were introduced late uh, last year in October. The initial was 200 million, but there was no easing of the liquidity crisis. And hence, you know, you have seen that the range is not there. When it was introduced, it was one is to one to the US dollar. That's what they said. Yeah. But today, <laughs> you know, you're going to basically pay for much more uh, mm -hmm. for that. So the best case scenario is that the military need to be able to come out quickly and personal government needs to come out quickly to say, is it incapacitated, yes or no? Because there is a constitution that says the president cannot execute his duties, yeah. uh, either by death or any other form of incapacitation. Then they must declare election within 90 days so that we do not have an illegitimate government which is not really elected. So democracy then becomes, um, goes under threat if we don't call for elections soon. Thank <laughs> you.